Welcome to another one of my video tutorials in YouTube for the Gamma Optimizer. This one in particular is um, a simpler one. This is a tutorial that will cover the concept of Gamma and why Gamma is so important or in fact why I am so obsessed with Gamma in general. So the title is Gamma and, and Other Demons. This is basically uh, my attempt at humor, for those of you that know me. The subtitle is why optionality is not leverage, which is kind of like the eternal debate. Now, all of you, I bet at some point or another, came to options thinking that you will get tremendous leverage out of them. But the reality is that options provide something that looks like leverage, but in fact is called optionality. So hopefully through this particular lesson, and on this tutorial, we'll see what is the difference between optionality and leverage and why optionality is, in fact, superior to leverage for certain cases. So there are many ways to approach this subject. There are too many ways to approach the gamma, but my favorite one is why options lose value over time. That's, a, that's an interesting question. I mean, all of us trade options, all, all of you trade options, and it is a given that options decay with time. Like every second that you're holding an option, the option is losing value. And no one challenges that notion. I mean, it's kind of like they tell you, oh yeah, by the way, options lose value over time. Just accept it. But the question is why? So there are many answers to that, but the angle that I want to explore in this particular video is the angle of gamma. So the reason options lose value is because we are buying something that is very valuable, incredibly valuable, and because the market will not give you <laughs> such a valuable object for free, you are paying for it uh, to fault. Not only you are paying for it by, with the premium that you're using, but just by holding this instrument, uh, the way it decays is another way of paying for the extra um, magic thing that the instrument has. In this case, um, the magical element that you're, we are buying, the incredibly valuable element, is called convexity. <clears throat> so convexity is is something that is associated with nonlinear things, you no, know, like mirrors and lenses. As you can imagine. That that's convexity. Uh, in the context of uh, options, is convexity is basically, um, I, I will call use convexity sometimes, optionality sometimes, and gamma. The three things are basically the same when it comes to options. So you will see me using these words uh, interchangeable. So the thing is, um, I don't know if any of you are aware of this, the options deliver non-linear profit and losses. It's not like any other instruments. It's not like chairs or futures. Chairs and futures deliver perfectly linear profit and losses. That is, if the in underlying or if the or if the stock moves five points up, you get a profit, and if five points down, you get a loss, and it's exactly the same. I mean, the loss and the profit are exactly the same. Are linear. Like, with a particular slope, but it's a linear thing. Options, they don't have that. Options have incredibly nonlinear profiles. The thing is, those profiles are not visible to most of you because most of you uh, hold options until expiration. So this this convex profile of, op, the, of, of profits and losses is visible if you trade options before they expire. So let's say you buy an option with 10 days to expiration and then you sell it tomorrow. You will notice that. And I like to say this, in fact, I know a lot of you would like to hold options until expiration, until they expire that day, until they go in the money, but letting an option expire in the money, like waiting on that last minute, is basically throwing your money away. Because uh, this convexity is only visible before expiration. Once you're in expiration day once, the option is in the money, all these things, all these nice things disappear. I, so by now we are already curious, like, okay, so how, what is convexity? How does it look like? Uh, 
how exactly can I profit from it? So right here, ta -da, this is convexity. So look at this, this is a real option, uh, the XPX 2390 call option, which when I designed this particular video tutorial has two days to expiration and it cost 82 cents, literally 82 cents. No, this is a very cheap option right now. Um, and this is like what I call a profit and loss profile or a PNL chart. And in the X axis, you have all of the possible levels that XPX might take. And the Y axis is the return in raw dollars. This is like $4, $8, $12. This uh, dotted line is the current value of XPX and the red line represents the profit and loss. And so the way you read this, okay, if for some magical reason, the S&P 500 goes to 2,380, I'll make about two bucks. If it goes to 2,390, I'll make four bucks. And if it touches 2,400 uh, tomorrow, <laughs> Uh, I make almost $12. So look at this profit. This is a very convex profit. It's non-linear whatsoever. Like the max profit for this particular move approaches $12, while the maximum loss is the premium that you pay, which is only 82 cents. So that's why options are so powerful. You are buying optionality right here. This convexity, this optionality, you can see the power of it. Uh, you can turn you know, theoretically, you could turn 82 cents into more than 10 bucks. It's like we are talking about 1,000% return. We are not going to discuss how likely <laughs> is that, uh, that that happens. You know, I, I don't think it's likely that the S&P will touch 2,400 tomorrow. But for the sake of this explanation, I just want to show the profile. Not We, we don't worry about likelihoods. Just worry about how the profile looks like. So so this is a nonlinear profit and loss. And so you notice that the loss is a fraction on the maximum profit. The maximum profit is orders of magnitude, the investment, and, and the profits grow exponentially. This plot is valid before the option expires. So this is what you will see if you trade the option in and out before expiration day, before the two days. So this is how convexity looks like in options. So now what gamma is another way of measuring convexity. So gamma is just a mathematical parameter that we use. It's, it's convenient to, to capture the shape of that profit and loss chart with a single value. So that's what gamma is. So gamma in, in essence is a measurement of convexity, which is also a measurement of optionality when we are talking about options. In this chart, we are using, I am plotting the same option, it's the same call option, it's used with different expiration dates. No, so, so you can see the red line is two days to expiration, the green line 14, the, the blue line 25, and the, finally the purple one is like 53 days. I, th I think that you can see in the graph how optionality changes with time. So you notice how the option that is about to expire in just two days is incredibly optional. It has lots of optionality, lots of convexity. Profits grow tremendously and losses are small. As you pick options that are further away, that have longer data, late dated uh, expirations, you will notice how optionality just disappears to the point where in just 53 days, not even two months, uh, that option, the purple one, is basically a linear, a linear result, as you can see here. You can see it's basically in a straight line. So the farther you go out in expirations, the less optionality you are getting from your option. And this is something that uh, is a concept that, that most people struggle with because you have been taught uh, by, I guess, roll of thumb or oral tradition or some friend told you like, yes, let's buy time. You know, we need to buy time with the options. The, the, the longer data they are, the better because then we can wait out the move and if it doesn't happen or whatever. And I am telling you the opposite. The opposite is true. If you want to exploit 
uh, optionality. You really want to profit from optionality. You have to move near term. You really have to. Um, you have to start trading options with less days to expiration. I'm not saying that you have to trade options that with two days to expiration. This is an extreme case um, that I'm illustrating here. But in general, optionality is present the closer you are to expiration. So it's an interesting balancing act because of course, the closer you are to expiration, the less likely is that a particular move will happen. So you have to balance a, bu a launch, bunch of things. However, this is how it should be done. You know, we should maximize our optionality if we are playing long options. And maximizing optionality means picking near dated options. This is, there is no way around it. So let's continue talking about gamma. I mean, I'm obsessed with gamma. Gamma has another property. Not only gamma changes with time, so not only options that expire at different times have different gamma, but also it, it varies with the strike. So even for the same expiration, every option on that option line has a complete different gamma value, and it can be seen right here. Look at here the PNL, the profit and loss chart for. Options that expire in two days, but I'm just picking like a little cross section from 2,370 to 2,400, and you can see all of the profiles how different they are. No, like the 2,400 option is extremely cheap. You know, it loses nothing, and it kind of grows a little bit, not too much. And how the 2,370 delivers a nice return, but also loses a lot of money too. So. They, they change that the reason those profiles are different is because every single option has a different gamma value. So it starts becoming really complicated. I mean, okay, you now picking the best gamma, is, it starts to become like a tough problem to solve. It's not as simple as like, oh yeah, I'll pick this expiration. No, we, even within the expiration, you have to pick the correct strike for the trade you want to do. Here is a more detailed picture. So this one is actually like a more like a three-dimensional view, let's say it. So here you can clearly see how gamma varies by a strike and by expiration. So in this chart, I have different strikes on the x-axis, gamma values in the y-axis, and every color represents different expiration times. So the chart delivers a clear message the shorter dated options contain huge peak gamma. You can see that peak gamma is orders of magnitude higher than peak gamma for options that are far away. So right there is a message, you know, like if you trade really far away options, you're basically trading very small gamma or not gamma at all. And another interesting thing, notice how gamma is very small once you move far from the at the money value. Remember that the dotted line represents the current value, the near at the money value. And notice that as we move away from it, gamma starts to decrease dramatically. And it happens for all the expirations. It's the same behavior, no? Gamma changes a lot no, no matter what size you move. Of course, in call options, <laughs> these are out of the money to the right of the, this line, the black line is out of the money options, and to the left is in the money options. But notice how interesting gamma is. So if we pick an out, out of the money option, it has a low gamma value. But you, you know, as SPX moves, let's say SPX starts to move towards my strike, you will notice that this option is not going to be as far in the money. So the gamma dynamics is, is this really cheap gamma starts to become more and more expensive as the underlying moves toward my strike. And if it touches my strike or is about to touch my strike, gamma becomes the maximum. So this is something, this is the gamma, it's a, it's a gamma dynamic that you will want to keep in mind. You have to keep in mind that if you pick out of the money options, with very low gamma values, uh, you are you are picking a good trade because as the underlying moves, the gamma of those options is going to become higher and higher. And as we saw, the higher the gamma is, um, the more the quicker your profits will grow. You know? So 
if you are a net buyer of options, that's something that you will want. Uh, another thing with Gamma. So for those of you that have a little more in-depth knowledge of options, uh, that have heard or have studied or have read about the Greeks, uh, from all of the Greeks, for me, gamma is the most important one because it's the one that defines pretty much everything. Everything else is defined around gamma. So once you know the gamma of an option, you can know everything else. Uh, mathematically, like quantify it mathematically, and also quanti like uh, qualifying it in a, in a more like a high level way. For instance, theta. Theta is the time decay, no? So there is an intrinsic relationship between gamma and theta. The relationship is very, is it cannot never be violated for a single option. So if you have positive gamma, theta is negative. So it is a law of the universe. You cannot have both positive theta and positive gamma. In, in plain English means if you, are, if you have optionality in your portfolio, you also have time decay. If there are no free lunches in the market, if you are enjoying the, the fruits of optionality, you are suffering <laughs> through time decay. So, and as you might see, I just might imagine, the higher the gamma that you have, the higher the time decay is, like you are going to lose even more money. So, so no wonder that short dated options lose money really quickly because short dated options have very high gamma value so they lose money lose a lot of money every day while longer dated options uh, don't lose that much money to tiny decay but they don't have that much gamma either so i know m many of you like to trade longer dated options because you cannot stand the time decay but just i just want you to remember that by sacrificing that, by lowering your time decay, you're also lowering your gamma to the point that in many times you have gamma that is very close to zero. And another uh, Greek that is very important here is called Vega. Vega it measures the sensitivity of an option to implied volatility. So an implied volatility is something that I will do another video about, but you can think about implied volatility as the win of the option dealers. You know, implied volatility is uh, how option dealers see the world and how much money they want to charge you. Like option dealers sometimes will be very pessimistic and they will jack up the implied volatility on, a, on an option or so other times option dealers are like, ah, they don't care and they lower the implied volatility. Vega measures how sensitive uh, the price of an option is to those changes. And gamma is intimately related to Vega too. It's, there is a, it's a relationship, it's like another law of the universe. So Vega and gamma are the same sign and the higher the gamma that you have, the lower the Vega that you have in your portfolio. So in other words, short dated options for instance are, have almost no sensitivity to implied volatility. Implied volatility can change a lot um, because they have so much gamma, Vega is very small, so the net dollar effect on the option price is very small. However, longer dated options that almost have no gamma, or gamma is almost zero for those options, have tremendous amounts of Vega, like gigantic amounts of, amounts of Vega. So when you are dealing with longer dated options, not you know, just because you don't want to lose to time decay, not only you are sacrificing gamma, you are exposing yourself to a bigger risk. That is, if there are massive changes in implied volatility, the option prices will suffer massively too because Vega is too big. So something to keep in mind too, like when you are trading longer dated options, in particular when you are trading leaps, what we call leaps op, uh, options, which are one year or more um, away, those options are basically a Vega play. So if that's what you want, you know, play with Vega all that you want. But if you are a gamma person like me, then play near dated because <laughs> gamma is more prevalent near dated options and vega is vega effects are smaller so something to keep in mind for those of you that like to 
play with longer data, longer dated options. Um, well, this is an explanation of all of the things I just say. <laughs> So now we come to the point, okay, so I am trading options for a living. I, in life, many of you like to buy options because it's the uh, less risky of the two possibilities um, between buying and selling, buying has, carries less risk. So how can we optimize our option trading? So, so to, to, to do that, I go back to the golden rule of, all the, of the stock market, which is buy low and sell high and very good options the golden rule is not in dollars so don't, don't worry about the dollar value worry about gamma in the golden rule with options is buy cheap gamma that's what you have to buy find cheap gamma and then sell it when it's expensive so you buy an option with very cheap gamma and you sell it with that option becomes expensive in terms of gamma so in other ways if you really want to have the benefits of optionality, then focus on options that are near term, which have higher gamma by default, and also out of the money strikes, which as we saw in the previous chart, let's, I am going to come back to that chart here, uh, this one right here. So near dated and out of the money, notice how cheap is gamma, and notice how expensive gamma can get. So that's a, that's a good suggestion. Uh, just buy cheap gamma, sell expensive gamma. So we come to the question, well, then what is the best way to pick an option? So I can tell you right away the best way to pick an option is you could optimize by hand. So just take all of the possible options for a particular underlying, which in the case of something like SPX might be thousands of them, around 5,000 different options. Pick the ones with, the, with cheap gamma, Pick the ones that don't decay much in terms of uh, percentage-wise. I mean, for the for the time frame that you want. Also, from that group, pick the ones that hit peak gamma for the particular move that you want. You know, because some of them will not hit peak gamma. So, so, so for that move, just pick the ones with peak gamma. Also, if the underlying moves in the other in the other direction, just just restrict yourself to the group of options and lose, don't lose that much money if the move is against you. And finally, because there are implied volatility effects, even though Vega might be low, it's not zero, so you still have some risk. So take into account the risk because there are dynamics in the way that implied volatility works when the underlying moves. And so once you do all those things, you can pick the correct option. But the whole point of this video is that the best thing you can do is use use the gamma optimizer because it does all of that and much more behind the scenes. So the gamma optimizer um, basically is a tool that is doing all of the heavy lifting for you. It is looking for cheap gamma, it is taking into account time decay, it is taking into account risk reward which means what happens if the underlying moves against me and also is taking into account implied volatility dynamics of what we call the volatility surface uh, simulation thing when I take into account the effects of changes in implied volatility. So this is it. I hope you have enjoyed this particular tutorial. Uh, it was just a quick discussion uh, on gamma and why will you see, and um, also is a good answer, why the gamma optimizer tends to suggest short dated options that are kind of out of the money. So here is the explanation why, because we are trying to buy cheap gamma and sell very expensive gamma. Okay guys, hope to see you soon. Take care.